Right, so over the course of this year, I've taken my FTP from 3.2 watts to hopefully over four watts per kg. And there are a few things that I have done and focused on that have really made a difference. First and foremost, when I came into this year, I was a little bit heavier. I wouldn't say that I was necessarily overweight, but I had, uh, uh, or I broke my leg uh, towards the end of last year, actually almost this week, a year ago. So I had a little bit of weight that I didn't really need to carry. So a good training program or consistent training has definitely helped with lowering my body weight just a little bit. The goal is not to be super lightweight. I am not riding any tours anytime soon, so I do not need to worry about that. But I have lost a little bit of weight, which does make increasing my FTP just that little bit easier. So I am now weighing around 77 kg. The second thing I started to look at once I had done my original FTP test, and that is something I'd recommend to you, is that if you are looking to improve as a cyclist and you are reasonably new, or even if you are kind of reasonably uh, proficient with cycling, but you are still looking to improve, is do an FTP test now and then take away the points that you think you can improve on. So one of the things I did was my first FTP test, I noticed that my cadence was really high uh, really quickly. And now that I've done a few others, I've noticed that my cadence has come down at relative wattages, which basically means that my legs have got stronger. And this is something that I recommend you guys look into is at what point are you having to spin up really fast because that is ultimately all you can do to try and hold on to the power. We all get to it, but what we can do is actually try and train so that we can hold on a slightly lower cadence and push out a higher wattage before we have to just completely spin and turn our legs over, which kind of feels a little bit easier, but then works our aerobic system a little bit harder. Second thing I will point out if you're looking to improve your FTP is obviously that infamous cycling world of uh, zone two training. And the reason we do this is because it helps our blood flow and the mitochondria in our muscles grow and develop. And that means that we effectively can do more and be more efficient with our cycling. And this is why zone two is so important to, cy uh, to cyclists. And it is something that I had a chat with a friend of mine who's doing his master's at St. Mary's University about, which is developing mitochondria uh, in your legs and the muscles that you are using, which just makes it easier. It means that you are able to produce more energy, it means that the relativeness of how hard you push at certain intensities can feel easier because you are just becoming more efficient at basically supplying your body with A, blood, and B, getting that energy out to Kind of put the wattage down and that is basically the principle behind zone two training and something that you need to kind of work on which is effectively just being consistent and putting in more time on the bike so look at your overall mileage perhaps for your last four weeks and see whether you can tack on another 20 50 miles a week and if that is going to have an impact the last thing I'd recommend you need to work on, and this is not groundbreaking guys, is just general fitness. Things like repeatability, kind of doing a, an effort, bringing it back down, and then being able to do an effort again. So ultimately, if you are looking to improve your FTP, the first thing I say that you should look at is, is cadence and leg strength, and that is incredibly important. The same guy I chat to about mitochondria and building um, a blood supply and improving your efficiency on the bike, when we talk about leg strength and um, training and strength training on the bike, it's very important to do high wattages at a low cadence during training rides or even training workouts on Swift, because that way you are developing the specific muscles that you need to cycle. Sounds super easy or it does make complete sense in that obviously your muscles are a series of strands and the ones that you are using specifically to cycle are the ones that you are gonna develop. So although gym training is great, and I do really encourage you to do a bit of gym training, doing big kind of leg strength training on a bike where you are putting out high wattage at a slightly lower cadence, 80, 85 RPM, will definitely develop leg strength. So when it comes to performing or racing or even just doing an FTP test, you might notice that the next time you do it, your cadence at a relative FT or a relative wattage should be a little bit lower. And hopefully you can see that when you look back at some of my FTP tests. And if you dive into one of my FTP videos that I will link at the top, you'll see that I've been able to bring my cadence down relative to certain uh, wattage levels. And I hope that makes sense. Then again, 
We've got zone two training, which is self-explanatory. Just be more consistent, spend more time on the bike. Obviously, the more time you spend at intensity doing things like races or workouts, it's gonna be a little bit harder to push and keep that volume. So there is that kind of what I refer to as a little magic triangle of intensity, volume and rest. Like you can't work all three at the same time. You can only really kind of push one and um, the other two uh, have to kind of sacrifice and be a little bit um, kind of you have to you can only really do one out of those three at any one time and then you have to kind of switch around between them. The last thing is obviously working on your repeatability and your cardio, working fitness and improving your heart rate is incredibly important. Again, if you look at some of my FTP tests, my heart rate relevant to certain zones has now become a little bit lower. Effectively, I'm just better and fitter um, than when I first started. Things that have helped me to get to that stage have definitely been things like joining in as many Swift races as I can. Um, I absolutely love doing the Swift races and recently I've been doing a lot more Swift workouts where I kind of push my heart rate a little bit higher. I will say that the workouts don't tend to take my heart rate to that top, top, top end quite in the same way that some of the races do because races will very often take me to complete failure and heart rate has a little bit of a lag in it. So you will push really hard, but your heart rate might not rise um, as quickly as you are pushing. So when it comes to some workouts, the intervals that you are doing, maybe one, two minutes, might not take your heart rate to your absolute maximum because there is a little bit lag and you will end up stopping before you kind of get there. With a Zwift race, obviously I'm finding myself trying to hold on for certain periods of time. Sometimes I'm getting dropped. Um, and if, it, if I get kind of teased through, if you will, if I can just about hold on and push and push and push, then that's the point when my heart rate gets to the highest. And I have, will have to say that now that I've started Zwift racing, I have my heart rate, I have seen my heart rate the highest it has been for the last five, six years. So I'm kind of astounding myself when it comes to improving my heart rate or at least being able to take it to higher levels. And this is something that I think you guys are definitely worth working on. And then if you can relate that back to an FTP test, you should find that you are more comfortable at certain wattages once you do more training that takes you to that level. So just to recap guys, first thing you want to do is kind of set a bar and do an FTP test and then take the little things within that test that you think you can work on. So for me, I looked at my cadence and realized that I was spinning up really high really quickly and I knew that I needed to develop leg strength. So I was doing workouts where I was doing two to five minutes that were going to help build leg strength. So high, holding high wattage at a slightly lower RPM, uh, 80 to 85, um, for two to five minutes or two to six minutes, which was definitely building the leg strength and specific leg strength because I was developing these strands of muscles that are very uh, particular to my cycle stroke because again, feet are in the pedals, bum is on the seat. We are definitely working the correct muscles. Second thing I then worked, uh, worked on was my heart rate and that I was doing things like Zwift races, which I think have been fantastic for my fitness, but also doing the odd workout where I try and maintain like a tempo session. So anything from kind of 12 to 20 minutes of a consistent wattage have been great. And, I will f and what you might find in those is your heart rate doesn't get um, anywhere near your peak, but you are working at a threshold level, which is really good to develop aerobic fitness. And then lastly, what you wanna work on is obviously your zone two training, which is ultimately just consistency, guys. Set yourself a target of trying to hit anything from 150 to 250 miles a week, which is a lot of cycling, I will admit. Like that is a huge amount of time. And obviously if you're doing that outside, it will take you a little bit longer. I do a ton of my miles indoors, which is a little bit easier on Zwift. So I kind of try and bump that number up a little bit higher but I do find that that zone two training helps improve your blood flow, blood flow and your mitochondria in your muscles, which effectively just makes you more efficient. So there you go, guys, my three top tips that are gonna help you improve your FTP. And then hopefully if you do one as um, like a barometer, just set that benchmark, and then you repeat another one in five or six weeks, and don't be afraid to do an FTP test. I've done plenty of them, go and check them out. Um, and you will definitely see the differences and make sure you pay attention to the two. And if you can record them and have a look and go back over them, I definitely feel like that helps. But ultimately guys, be consistent, focus on the things that you notice in your FTP that you might want to work on or might need working on 
and then guys just kind of commit to it and get a little bit obsessed with it. That's how I basically went from riding at 3.2 watts at the start of the year to hopefully hitting just over four because I'm about to do another FTP test now and the video will be up here.